Big Shook, Big Shook. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Yes, yes, we are here, the Danger Zone Podcast, number 82. Hey, we're getting closer and closer. 82, baby. We're getting closer we're getting and closer to, that, to 100. Get to that century, Mark. Hell yeah. So what's going on? What's going on in the world, man? What's going on in the world of well, hip-hop? Well, first, I would like to say, I'm Big Shook. Hey, oh. go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> hey. oh, Thank I, you, Big Shook. Who are you? Consistency. And who are you? No, who are you? I'm Mr. DL. And I'm Chef Tanya Nicole. Welcome Just, back, everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah me. Yo, yo, Can we do it I, correctly? I mean, it's hey, episode 82. I I just wanted to be, I am Big Shoe. But anyway. <laughs> he just wanted to say his he, name. He didn't give me my intro. Yeah, yo, we here intro, 82. Yeah. Yeah, what's up with you? He's off. I'm off. I'm off. He's I'm off. trying yo. to roll a joint. I'm trying to roll it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's doing too many things. You know things. what I'm saying? Yo, I just made this new this mail too real quick before we jump off. The crockpot mail. It, it was mad easy though, cause it was uh potatoes, um, kielbasa, and green you like beans. That sausage. You know what I mean? So <laughs> cut up cut up sausage though. But um and the shit is massive good. I mean, you know, you got garlic powder, um, you got um adobo onion powder and, the, and some um, real onions and shit. So it's really tasty, but man, I was like, well, I never did it before, but you know, I come up with these little recipes to get it popping. So, no further ado. First and foremost, um, I'd like to talk real briefly about uh, Snoop Dogg Snoop. and 50 Cent. Snoop Dogg! So 50, 50 Cent goes to LA for the show, but all those who don't know, uh, he has the hottest ticket. Just imagine all these years later, that is the hottest uh Constant ticket out, you know, Decent. over a million uh, or close to a million worldwide tickets sold. Yeah. Uh, so venues are sold out. So they got, I believe they got to Cali and they were sold out. And he went on Instagram, being 50 Cent, and he said, hey, if you don't have any tickets, it's sold out. Hit up Snoop. Because then Snoop, you know what I'm saying, he, he, he can take care of that. Then he went off Instagram. And uh, so now everybody's blowing up Snoop. And Snoop got a little perturbed. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, yo, these motherfuckers all blowing me up. I ain't got no goddamn tickets. Plus, it just shit is sold out. He said, he don't know why he did that, but you know, it's 50 cent being 50 cent. You know what I mean? So, the, 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 in, the, in the nutshell, basically, Snoop was just a little man, you know, upset that 50 did that, but 50 was just having fun. You but know, shout out to him. You know, like, and, um, the whole 50 cent thing, this is so random, but when I came, like, uh, I didn't come into the game under Onyx, but at one point I had a, a group with them, and mm. I kind of had like inherited beef with people I didn't even know, like you know what I'm saying the whole G, G unit thing. And then one day I'm talking to Bangham Smurf. Or did, I did a video for Bangham Smurf. I don't know if you guys even remember that guy, but yeah, but I said I know, but I said why, like you know y'all go hard on this guy. Why you go so hard on him? And this is what he said to me. Shout out to Bangham Smurf. This is what he said to me. He said, Fifty Cent acts like a gangster and he raps about guns but he didn't he didn't kill no one like that and then in the same sentence he said this in the same sentence big shot he said i mean he used to walk up to killers and knock them out cold and shit but he you know he didn't he didn't talk about that he didn't he didn't shoot nobody so I, and i was like bro the story you're telling me right now is right. Is, <laughs> is that this man walked up to armed murderers with a one shot all he had was his fist Knowing that if I didn't knock this dude out, he's probably gonna blow my head off. And, and mm. you're you're trying to tell me that that's not gangster? I I I, I don't know what gangster is. Then I guess. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is crazy because like, I mean, he, to, to me, he does some funny shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, let's, yeah, let's, he, he, you always gotta take shit with a grain of salt and being like, all right, well, at one point in your life, you were saying he was the most gangster, and now mm. now that you have falling out, he's a, he's a bitch ass motherfucker. You know what I mean? And you know what? Like we go all the way back a few episodes back when we talked about shit. Uh, Steven Spielberg, he's far from gangster. Yeah, yeah. But guess what? He's rich. He lives his life. Boom. And that's what fifty years. We know that. So you know what I mean? But uh, shout out to him and Boston Rams, man. You know, oh, yeah. one of the greatest. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to him, man, because uh, he's on that tour too, and it, it, I'm sure it's a great one. 
Hopefully they come near me or some or us, so I'll go check it out. We'll yeah, we missed out. it. It was in Mansfield. We missed it. It was like one of the first ones. Oh, yeah, yeah I definitely would have been there. I, I, I spaced on that. I didn't see any advertisements. It must have been one of those 94.5 advertised shows, and I just don't listen to the radio, so I, I went over my head. I saw mm. I saw people there posting, oh, 50 Cent Tour. I was like, oh, shit. Damn. So. I see you. Um, I see you. Um, I see you was posting uh, with you and Sticky Fingers. You know, <laughs> yeah. shout out to Sticky Fingers. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, you know, like that's one of like as I tell the stories, that's one of the groups and people that at the same time everybody was on an ascension. Yeah. So if you went to clubs, I or every rapper was there. It's funny too, because it wasn't even no beef shit like that. It's like everybody was at uh, every rapper that had some record out that was popping yeah. was in these same clubs together, like you know what I mean? Um beef, chilling, beef drinking, was somewhat and, rare back then, I would I as I huh? beef was somewhat rare back then as I mean yeah. it really was because you know what? You wasn't really having beef with rappers. If there was beefs, it would be some side side shit, like you know, dudes in the in the spot, yeah, or dudes like fighting in the in there. It, it wasn't rappers because rappers was almost like, yo, we're, we're on the same team, yep. like that little rap video. You know what I mean? That's really how it was. Oh shit! They, I told you about the story in front of McDonald's and all the rappers yeah, converged. Yeah. Oh, nobody was anybody standing out there like, yo, what's up? Yeah, and me, I was good with everybody because. Uh, you know, obviously, I just came home at, from being incarcerated, and then um, everybody know that everybody in rap at that time wanted to be like affiliate that affiliated and um and, and like, what do you mean gang affiliated? They want, they want to be affiliated with like tough dudes. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, me, I was considered. See, even rap was like that. Like when I went to go do interviews, they would want us like talk about the past a lot and the gangsterism and certain shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Today, that's not really the thing, but it really was. And then it would have whole labels scared to death. You know, I once had a meeting and I sat in this room and see one dude for 30 seconds, then another um, dude for maybe another 30 seconds. So I'm standing this shit like with hour in this room at EMI, you know, and I'm like, yo, what are we doing? I, I mean, I flew up here, whatever to do this, y'all do this, doing this. And um, dude say, man, he said, yeah, well, we're going to put out the single. You know what I'm saying? Lindsay at the time working <laughs> in. We're going to put the single out and we're going to give you this much money. Whatever. I was like, damn, there was never no meeting, yo. Yeah. It was there. And I know they was on some like, like, oh, this dude. You know, you could look to part like some WWE shit back like, like at that <laughs> point. Because dudes were still able to go into the front door. So what are you saying? They were taking club. you for like, they weren't taking you serious at the meeting? Oh, no, they were scared oh. because they they feel they're the dealing. Like, they feel like they're dealing with a gangster or a killer, like yeah. you know what I mean. So, and you know, if you're if you're a fish cake from the suburbs or something, you know, like so that's why a nation like oh, he's like, you know what I'm saying. So, um, the crazy thing about it is, so I got this brand and I put they put the record out. Shout out to Lens wherever he is. I, I know he was like kind of soft up like that, but um. You know, it was just wild how, like, that if they just talked about you. And then I was going other places and people were like, yo, I heard you just came home. I heard you just do it, like, in the industry. Yeah. But you could walk, like I said, you could walk through the front door right then at a luxurious building, go all the way upstairs, see, hey, what, where's I'm so and so who might be the AR? Oh, he right, he's in his office, go down his office, slap fire at him. You know what I'm saying? Talk to him for a few, <laughs> then go back down out the elevator. That's how accessible it is. <laughs> That's why now you go to them joints to Fort Knox. Like, you know, it's everybody, like, you can't get nowhere in that shit. But back then, hey, sure, where you going? Hell, we, we're cool, we're going up in there. You know, where's the vice president at? He's right there. <laughs> Blah! You see what I'm saying? It was that simple, man. Caps, Caps was involved. No, they know that shit like that. Bro. Anyway, um, yeah, they popping. What's going on? Um, Let's see. This weekend, I did a video for Kid Kid from G-Unit. Uh, G Unit mm. from Young Money. G I didn't know any of his music, but I had heard of him. I, was, I keep my ear somewhat to uh, all gen all genres of hip hop and age ranges and locations. There's some I right. don't like. I don't like like I don't like Juggalo rap. I don't like Hyphy rap, which is like Northern California Bay Area mm -hmm. rap. I, I just can't really get into it. But <clears throat> um, I try to listen That's to everything. Cool. He was actually good. He had, he had good bars. So I was, uh, you know, we do have a. 
um, we do stereotype Southern rappers as not being lyrical. We, you know, mm. as much as we like to cl- claim we don't, I feel like we do because when a super lyrical Southern rapper comes out, we lose our Everyone's mind. Everyone's impressed. Yeah, so um, yeah, where's he at? Where's he from? He's. I'm not saying he's that. I'm not saying he's that. I'm just saying that he was good. He was a good rapper. He's from New Ooh. Orleans. Yeah. And hold hold that train of thought because I did run away on that thing with uh sticky fingers. Yeah. What I was saying was, um, you know, like we we were all there at the same time basically, and and giving him a shout out is it, just is just due. Hell we yeah. need to have him come on here and talk for a minute too. Um, yeah, we know, can get him in. Uh, mm-hmm. but, I'm sure there's a few things to be thrown in the air. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, man. Anyway. We can also, talk about that source of words. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Blocker, blocker. Welcome to the Was that zone. really blocker? <laughs> blocker, blocker. Was that really blocker? I couldn't really see because it was kind of darker. <laughs> I just mean. Hey, the plaster blaster. <laughs> I just, <laughs> when you shoot at the root, the root usually falls apart. But I guess I couldn't see that shit. <laughs> It's too dark. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you know what I mean? They're going to be like, yo, what's up with your man? What's up with your man? Yo. You know how like, yo, You know how famous... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yo, did you brush your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> you know how wow. famous Jay-Z is? How famous is Jay-Z? Oh, yeah. Jay-Z can... Go ahead. Jay-Z can post an Instagram... Tw- uh, Instagram. Post on Instagram and it becomes worldwide news. <laughs> he, think about this. Go ahead. Think about the crazy thing is so when he, you know, you could tell the rest, but when he came back on Instagram because he was off for a while, yeah, to you know promote this movie or whatever, it's crazy because when you hear him speak, <laughs> it's such a positive, uh, it's such a positive, uplifting businessman in person, which is cool. That's probably what you what you become. Yeah, but I mean. He might have always been this cat, but I just always relate to me, him, and Jay Rue and a couple others being on the same label. Yeah. And now this dude, like, because even, you know, uh, uh, were you telling that story? Did you you know the story? Finish of what? what? You were saying about Jay-Z. No, I'm just saying he posted. He, what did he, he post about? He has a, a, the Book of Clarence is coming out January 2024. Right. It's a movie. Is he in it? Is he, he executive producer? What's... Um, I'm assuming, well, I'm assuming he's not in it. <laughs> no, he's not in it. But there, I heard there's a couple of rappers in there. Okay. And then there's a few others. But uh, the story is about a young man who finds his faith through love and through wanting to become somebody in the world, which is the story of everybody, Jay Z said. But anyway, that, I mean, you know. Um, Here's something I'm realizing. Did Jay Z just join Instagram? Because I went to his page. He only has one post and he only has 180,000 followers. So I'm wondering. Well, they're saying. They're saying that he 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 was on, but he went off. Okay. He wasn't on, and then when he because of this movie promotion, he jumped back on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what the deal is supposed to like. He just supposed he just got on. You know. Oh, okay. So uh, just speaking, 180,000 speaking followers overnight is pretty good. He's probably getting too many but too many DMs. Speak, speak, Hit him with Ricky the follow. Ricky with the good hair, so he has to get off. Hit him with the follow. <laughs> but speak, speaking speaking um on the movie. We also elaborated everyone wants to find love and everyone wants to leave this place having accomplished something, having left their mark, and they've been here hopefully affecting the world in a positive way. That's Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's dope because, so he's putting out this movie. I, I think it's a religious movie, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You know, it has a story to it in that manner. But, you know, anything that these guys do, uh, from from 50 Cent to Jay-Z to any other entrepreneur, anybody with any entrepreneurial, uh, um, you know, ideas or, or journeys, you know, <laughs> I respect it and I, and, I, and I embrace it like that because when the years are all gone and pass, you know what I'm saying, they're gonna, that's the mark they made on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is great. Like, like we're all now the rappers in, from that genre, like 50s, Yep. You know, late forties, you know what I'm saying? Where where boom, like we're starting now, we're trying to live and take it to the next level of everything. So, you know, I mean, uh sa- uh sadly enough to say, younger rappers are, are, are dying more than older ones. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. crazy, but it's, it's, you know. 
We're here, man. As long as they make their mark, man, and, and do these great things. Shout out to Jay Z, man. I, I I appreciate him. I think he's to me. Uh, he might be the top MC or next to it. Um, yeah, like I say all the time. I, <clears throat> if there was a right answer, I think it's Jay Z, but he's not my favorite. But I I try to be. I try to look at it without like being biased. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as MCs, like like even Eminem, he's up there. But like it ain't like he's my favorite. But I, I can't front. He had a few songs that I actually did like. Yeah, yeah. Just because I like, I like the stand joint. I like the um, lose yourself joint. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I could even feel them shits. You know what I mean? So, you Hell know. yeah. <clears throat> but anyway. Me fucking. Also. Oh, yep. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to tell this one thing before we, you know, slide with my mans. Uh, and get up in there and pause and uh, talk to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Cameron salutes Nas and calls him the greatest lyric of lyricist of our time. Yeah. Um, because for the, the 50 celebration performance that he had in Madison Square Garden, he you know Cam was grateful that he invited him to it to perform and do what he did he did. Because I guess they've had history of beef back in the day. And like I was that was what I was talking about earlier about, you know, cats living up and older and they they apologize and or getting over that, obviously, we're mature. Um, so, Cameron wanted to let it be known. He took the Instagram to let everybody know that he feels that Nas is the greatest of all time. Lyricist might, you know, if he's not one, he's two or whatever. And uh, he was so grateful and honored for him to include him in that in that performance. And he said he had rocked a lot of places several times, but he never rocked on. Uh, uh, would they have it at the, the Oh man, the stadium. You know what I'm saying? I'm bugging. Why ain't Where, Queens? The, the baseball joint. Where, Yankee the, Stadium. The, huh? Yankee Stadium in the Bronx? Yeah, my, my bad. The Yankee Stadium. They had the stadium. <laughs> it's like the you most famous mean? building in the world. That's what I'm trying <laughs> I'm, bug, I'm smoking bugs. But I'm saying, like, you know, us real shit. And he, had, he had never did that. Or, where the action? No, hold on. Hold on. No, it ain't that. Where did they play? The Garden. What's it? Uh, Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. Was it Madison? Uh, no, I think it was Yankee. I'm not sure, but they'll, they'll find out. Anyway, <laughs> shout out to Cam. You know, Cam shout out. It's hilarious. To, um, that, to that situation, you know what I mean? So So yesterday we were talking about <clears throat> Michelle Lay. Remember her? Michelle Lay. Mm. Uh, we were talking mm. about <clears throat> that movie that, um, the movie, uh, her side of the story came out. NWA. The NWA yeah. story. But anyway, <clears throat> when you told me about that, I went looking for it, and oh, while boy. while you sent me while, while I was looking for it, she was trending, and I thought it was weird. I was like, "The fuck!" And she was trending because she was on, I guess she was on some sort of drugs or alcohol, and she had a performance, and it was terrible. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, it, was it was uncomfortable to watch. Like when when you get embarrassed for people, yeah, because exactly. you're like, "Oh wow, this is not good." Beep. People are like, because whether you're fucked up or whatever, before you even got up on the stage, you know this is how you felt. You already know. Yeah. So, like, because I, I saw the footage, too, and I was like, damn, girl. You know, it's, it's so funny because how we, because she was stumbling, she was doing, like, funny shit, funky shit, dance moves, <laughs> singing like, wow. Yeah. Like, fixing the, the shit was crazy. So, it, it, it was ironic that we were just speaking about yeah, that. Right. And all of a sudden, I seen it just like you. I'm like, oh. This chick, I don't know what she because uh, uh, shout out to Nomadic, she had posted that, reposted, um, and, and she was like, "Is this is this for real?" Yeah. And then I see that shit. I said, "Oh shit!" You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. Hopefully, man, she's cool. I mean, sometimes we have off nights. Yeah, you know I mean, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have a little bit. She might have a little bit too much. You know, yaggedy act don't come back. So speaking yo, of, yo, I had to write. Oh, go ahead. Yo, I had to write something cursive the other day, and I was like, "It's crazy, oh, right?" Shit. I was like, yo, wait a minute. I, I don't be writing shit in curse. I was like, yo, this shit caught me on some funny <laughs> yeah, shit. Do you know what's funny? If I write in a card, a lot of times if I write inside a card or something or a letter, I'll write in cursive. That's crazy. Like it makes it keep, official or something. You got to keep it up. Like you got to keep practicing. I, yeah. <laughs> I I write it. Like So now you know why when we was in the first grade and all that shit that it was having us big go with them letters over and over again. <clears> but, um, now they don't even bad. teach it anymore. I know. It's like, see, my I shit is uh. Shit. That's how the like, aliens my are gonna get it. My cursive is exclusive, meaning that like don't no shit look like that. So I, 
when it's, I do my signature. It's crazy though because things like um, the Declaration of Independence, for example, like yeah, it's been translated into print. Like if, if someone's typed it up onto a piece of paper, but if you if if you wanted to read it, <laughs> it might look like another fucking language to you, and it's your mm. language. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. But um, Yo, is, 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 is dude in it? No, not yet. I, I just wanted to shout out a couple more albums before he gets here. Um, <clears throat> Offset coming out with a new album. That's interesting. We'll see how the industry, um, you know, he's kind of, uh, not that he's canceled or anything, but he's kind of like the bad guy right now, you know, like within his mm -hmm. fan base because, you know, just with all the drama with happened between him and Quavo, then take out, you know, it was just, it was a, you know, it's a little much, but this is what I was excited for, ready? This is what I was excited for. 13 years later, finally, we got a new DJ Muggs album. 13 years. Yeah, he does put out albums with other artists like, uh, you know, Rock Marciano or Boldy James. Like, he does put out. But this is his album, Soul, Ass Soul Assassins 3. He has some huge fucking names on here, which is, you know, from mm. Rock Marciano, Ghostface Killer, Crime <laughs> Apple, Scarface, Freddie Gibbs, Evidence. Rome Streets, Mayhem, Loren, Method Man, Slick Rick, Be Real, MC Ren, Ice Cube, um, Devin the Dude. Yeah, he he has some. Oh, Scarface. Did I say Scarface? No. Good. Yeah. Good budget. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think guys like him. He probably. He don't need a budget. Need a budget. <clears throat> All these guys will come come. Yeah, it, it'd be I mean, like if, if DJ Premier made an album, people wouldn't be like, oh yeah, well you know, I'll get on there if you give me you know they, they'll get on it yeah. and, and hope for the back end publishing or whatever you know them true but if they want to sometimes they want to sprinkle uh that might happen if they sit someone in front of a label or something it's like sprinkling some of these new dudes yeah yeah be like oh yo, you need to have her and you need to have him mm -hmm. if that happens like that it is what it is but hey what you saying on that you know what i'm saying that's what happened with uh, 50 cent some that's what happened with 50 cent he got um on the song react on the shut him down onyx album jam master j told on i said you, you gotta take your buddy off of this record and put my new guy on there that's where he's going so oh he's uh, uh, so that's how that whole 50 cent onyx beef happened because um 50 couldn't tour and they went on the survival of the illest tour and that other guy took his place and when they came back to new york city 50 was supposed to do the show and this guy just bum rushed him took his mic and that's where all that animosity came from that one that one okay yeah I don't blame him, honestly, to be honest with you. You know, only be the only reason I don't blame him is because Onyx back backed that guy up. They wrapped his ad libs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's where I was like, all right, well, you can't expect him not to be mad, bro. <clears throat> so we're here, man. I think he's in here. We got a special guest today. Musician for uh -huh. real. So we got a <laughs> Ay Dios mio, big shit. Where'd you go, big shit? <laughs> You know we we on a podcast, right? He's doing the he's doing the podcast for the bathroom. <laughs> he's yelling through the yo, door. <laughs> yo, your man still didn't appear. No, he's right here. We're just waiting well, for him to here. say something. <clears throat> yeah, Mike, Mike. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Big six to mm. having a, a a big shook snack. <laughs> no, I was, yo, I told you. I was freaking that crock pot and this shit is banging. So um <laughs> you know, I'm on location. Um so no further ado. We're here today Thank with you. well well renowned, probably like hip hop too and, and and musically a bass uh the bass master, my man Brady Watt. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, we're glad to have you here. What's good, Brady? What's good, sure? Oh man, I'm uh, I'm just glad that you know we we we're, we're living today and we can do this and and just you know our contributions to the game and what have you, you know. So it's, it's beautiful for me. Um, but first and foremost, can you give the people that don't know a backstory, you know, about you know where did Brady come from and how did this come about? Because a lot of heads, even though uh, you're an accomplished bass player, that a lot of heads like know it from this hip hop thing. You know what I'm saying? So how did that evolve and, and where did your plan and all that come from, Brady Watt? Yeah, I've been uh I tell everyone I'm I'm like that kid from high school that played guitar, you know what I mean? You knew him in class, all that, except I never mm -hmm. quit doing it. I just been playing bass 
every day since I was 14 and I'm 37. Wow. I let I let every experience lead to the next one. And I uh, just, just never quit doing it, you know. Not for a day was I ever like, oh, I'm going to, I got to go hang it up or do this and that. I, I stayed steadfast to, mm-hmm. to the mission. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's brought me to where I am here, just brick by brick. Mm-hmm. I've, I've enjoyed the whole process. I, I learn every day. Learning is my priority. I start every day the same way, waking up and, um, and getting right on my instrument. You know, mm-hmm. before I do anything else. So, mm. um, but yeah, man, it's, it's been a long, crazy journey. Mm. I'm from Nashua, New Hampshire, as you know. Okay. okay. Yeah, we film yeah, here it's... in Lowell. We're in Lowell right here. That's where we film from. Dope, dope. Okay, we're in Lowell. Uh, I run South Campus, right near South Campus, uh, UMass. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, well, well, the well, the tents are. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, hey. So, Brady, listen. So, did you start? Did, did someone teach you, or did, were you trained to play the bass first and foremost? Yeah, um, I, I I got a guitar at age thirteen and just started playing, just self-taught, you know. Oh yeah. And then um, you know, my dad bought me a guitar at age thirteen and start taking lessons at daddy's junky music i'm sure you remember that store oh, yeah <laughs> that was that was a chain in new england so i took some lessons there um and then i changed the pace the next year when i was 14 and i've, I've had a lot of teachers man you know uh, a lot of mentors throughout throughout the uh the whole journey from like african cameroonian drum legends to to soul legends like blue magic to right. primo and um right. ski ski beats you know I've, I've just always been getting schooled by the masters since i was young people would take me in uh, under their wing and i'd help them too because i'm the young cat i bring mm. a certain energy i'm i'm open and, and ready to work so mm. it's that reciprocal relationship i think that's kind of brought me here you know, mm-hmm. and, and showing respect to, to the elders and, mm-hmm. you know, understanding the game and the social aspect of it. Mm. Uh, but that, it, was, it was always easy for me because I love doing it. You know, it, it, this it's never gotten old to me. I know sometimes I think about, um, you, you know, when you play the bass, or I think about like even uh, singing songs, almost like remakes um, to like where the bass is the, the main line. You see what I'm saying? This is me, how I think, like, like soul R&B type thing, but some classic remakes, but the bass is that, you know, it's, it's basically like, and, and the bass is soul instead of bass and balls. So, I mean, it's, it's all the shit, you see what I'm saying? So, but um, um, on another note, so this hip hop thing, were you always, you know, into the hip hop or were you playing the soul and all that other music first or did you you know what i mean how did you become this like this a lot of people know you as a hip-hop bass player you know what i mean so how did that part come about uh yeah i, I got into hip-hop when i was eight years old mm. my older stepbrother put me on you know he put me on to a tribe called quest uh wu-tang a gang star mm. uh pete rock cl smooth all that stuff when i was when i was a kid man so but I, I always had an eclectic taste in music, but mm. hip hop definitely struck me when I was eight years old, and I, I went, you know, hard into that, and it it became a part of my identity and just a part of life, which I'm sure you understand, you know. Right. I'm sure right. the same thing happened for you, and um, but as far as the music goes, I feel like as I got better at music and better at jazz and just more skilled, I kind of went back into the hip hop thing from when I was mm. younger. And then built on it uh, more and more because the reality of hip hop is if, if you're a hip hop musician, then you're playing every style of music because hip hop samples every style of music. Right, right. So you got to be able to do any anything. Mm. It's a formless genre of, of sorts when when put on an instrument. It's it's crazy too because I uh, there's a female. I mean, I don't I don't have her name. Forgive me, but. Uh, she plays she plays um samples on piano you know online like you know and that's her her little spell 
and it just reminds me of that like all the different piano riffs or different stuff that have come from samples she actually is playing it so it's, it's actually pretty dope uh similar to, to some things that you do um were you always just bass did you ever try to rap or, or you know what i mean yeah i never really um i never tried to rap i never wrote a rap until uh like two years ago till i was 35 which is crazy <laughs> and I, I did it just uh for fun also i had a song with flea lord yep. i don't know if you guys are familiar with flea lord i met him through the griselda guys through west side gun and, yep. and mm. benny and them and we actually have a full project and i was waiting on talib Kwali to do a, a feature for me for you know six months or something like that mm. and i was on the plane i was listening to it over and over again and i'm and I'm like, yo, let me write a verse to this just for fun. Cause I, I had been writing more hooks and singing, you know, writing lyrics in general, uh, working with words, which didn't start until the year 2020 for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I wrote a verse to that and then gave, got back and, and spit the verse. And that shit's hard, bro. <laughs> like, like not even just gassing myself. My first verse is it's, it exists and it's on a Flea Lord song. This. Oh, okay. This, it's yeah. supposed, it's gonna come out, but to be honest, I'm not trying to be a rapper because what one thing I learned too is like if you want to be a rapper, you gotta do that shit. You can't be doing a million different things. Or I feel like it's a certain dedication that I wasn't trying to fully go there mm -hmm. and and be that type of artist. I'm I'm much more interested in um, in writing songs like singing as you know like i i write a lot of hooks and i have a whole career as a singer yeah the, the i can put together bars because i'm good with words you know the thing that was that got me so as i didn't know uh at first about the singing part and then when i heard you doing a uh, bass and bars with um i think eric sermon maybe and you hit yeah, the right. like music I was like, oh, he actually sound like, you know, all right. Like, it's, it wasn't corn, so it was like, yo, he can it sing It wasn't corn. But, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I, I peeped that. And, and for all those who don't know, so can you tell them, since I brought it out, about bass and bars and how did that come out? You see what I'm saying? How did that come about, so to speak? Yeah, so Bass and Bars is my series on the internet. It's on all streaming platforms, YouTube, Instagram, etc. Where I, Brady Watt, link up with a different artist for every episode and essentially perform a duet, bass and vocals. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've added some other guest instrumentalists here and there, but that's the I main... No. I saw that recently with, uh, yeah, what was it? With somebody was playing keys, I think. Yeah, Just... be because we did the message with uh, Melly yeah, Mel. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my, and my my homie, who's a brilliant key, keyboard player, I, I came in the studio. He had those sounds exactly right, and I was yeah. like, "Yep, exactly." Yep. He fucking nailed that <laughs> shit. Mm -hmm. So, do you uh, only so do you only play the bass line of the song, or sometimes do you play the melody of the song? Yeah, um, well, everything's always live, and sometimes people think I'm cheating or playing with the backing track, which yeah. would be almost impossible. But uh, yeah, I, I have a loop pedal, so I'll play the bass line, let's say, for instance, uh, for a regulate. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. I can loop that <laughs> and then play anything over it. Oh, dope. Hell yeah. Um, and then continue to compound the loops and go anywhere with, with that. So the, the loop pedal was uh, a, a huge uh, technology jump kind of in my plane. It made me a much better player and it opened up so many doors and places I could go with it, you know? Yeah. Essentially accompanying myself. Where I, I just did a whole tour with Gary Clark Jr., like huge shows, like me, me opening up for him, 5,000, four or 5,000 people a night. And it was just me on stage, me singing in my loop pedal, no computer or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, the crowd the crowd went crazy every night, man. It was it was wild, and um, it's the loop pedal's hard, man. You got to hit that shit right on time. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking it's about a train that. wreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As <laughs> I'm sure you know, like with yeah. audio and DJ and stuff, it it can go awry easily. Yeah. Crazy thing is, 
like the, the, the thing with me is like, so you play the bass and, and I thought it was so dope when we did the song uh, Back Around the Way, yeah. uh, which is a song, um, you know, that com was compri compromised, comprised excuse me, of um, several MCs, um, you know, different parts and different types or whatever. But the dope thing is when you were playing the stand up bass, you know what I mean? Because it would have obviously been a different and simple uh, visual, you know, playing the bass. But the stand up bit was like even, it, it just put that classicness to it, you know what I mean? And so you you play the stand up as well. Yeah, yeah. That So we recorded that during COVID, fresh. Remember, because no one was going outside and everyone thought we were crazy for shooting a music video. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> We was it was early in COVID, like the beginning of that summer. But I started playing upright bass. That was the first song I recorded on upright bass was back around the way. I started playing that in twenty twenty. Oh, you did you play that on the track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of my practice was I went in every day and just went went hard on the upright bass and especially for back around the way. Every yeah. day I would I would just put on the metronome at the same time and just come up with the best stuff possible and then because you know it changes it changes yeah. parts several times yeah i i recorded every day for a few weeks or something and then made like a frankenstein of the best baseline i could possibly right. put together you know and then that became back around the way the shit was so dope because it was like first of all so you told me a few people um i was honored the privilege to be on it but you told me a few people but i didn't know everybody until who was on there until I certain people certain places and they'd be like hey you did a song with this dude or hey I'm Pleasure Pete I did a song with you hey um uh, oh you're on a song with Millie's right? you, I'm like yeah well I found that shit. but it was dope it was so dope you know just even the concept man you know I I, I mean I've never seen that before either the bass and the, the rhymes and even the, you know just singing whatever so I think I think it's terrific. Except for Bootsy Collins back in the day. Other than that, right? you know what I mean? Uh, uh, my man, uh, DL. Yeah. You got your name. You got something. Um, you got something I wanted to know if you play bass on DJ Premier Beats. Um, which ones am I on? I'm. I'm on. I'm on one song with uh, on the Prime album. Oh, nice. With him and Royce and yep. CeeLo. Oh, sweet. Uh, and then I'm on like another kind of a batter song that we did. Okay. And then I have the song. Yeah, that's called uh, Batter Baby or something like that. Yeah. And then the song, my song, The Narcissist featuring Primo and West Side Gun. Mm. Um, so I'm pretty sure those are the collabs we have. So Preem, Preem doesn't need me at all. Right. <laughs> Prem Prem programs the the bass the same way every track, and believe me, I've tried to be like, yo, let me let me get on that, you know what I mean? Because our studios are next to each other, right? Oh, okay. I see. I'm with that dude like every day, so you would think it would happen more, but nah. He has a certain technique and way he does it, but there are records in the pipeline where me and Carlos compose the music and sample us. That's yeah. happened a few times. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. there are more coming too. Tell them about, so uh, those who don't know, Premier has a band. At times they go out and do different things. Uh, can you tell about that band and, and the name and all that, um, Brady? Yeah, so DJ Premier and the Batter Band. I met Primo probably nine years ago. Uh, one of his interns knew I was a huge fan because Prem's like my favorite producer since I was a kid. So one of his interns knew I was doing my thing and he's like, man, you got to meet this kid. So I pulled up and um, this is when Prem was still at D&D. &D. And uh, he never forgets it too because he, he was watching me on the security camera with Suge. I'm sure you remember that. D&D. Mm -hmm. &D, mm -hmm. um, you can see people coming in from the security yes. camera. Yes. And... Um, yeah, he says he remembers seeing me on there. And we went in, and I had my bass on my back, and we just became quick friends because, as you know, man, Prem, Prem will talk your ear off. Anyone, he'll talk to the janitor for two hours or mm -hmm. 
you know uh when he should be making a record but go ahead <laughs> yeah it, it, it drives our managers crazy but that's that's right. how he is and if he wasn't that way i probably wouldn't even be where i am so it's mm. all good but we, we <laughs> talked about everything man for like for an hour talked to face and jaco pistorius james jameson and bootsy p-funk uh rush just talking about music became friends and then years went by but when uh the japanese promoter yuji which you probably know yuji should yes yeah, of course yeah, that's, that's our guy He's so yuji yuji wanted to book cream with the band and he wanted to set cream up with like some famous jazz musicians and cream was like was like yo we, you know we, we can take auditions but i know the bass player i know who i'm gonna pick for bass and so the whole time he had me in mind and he he put me right in the band and he was right he trusted his instinct with that and after we did that it was a huge success in japan did a shit ton of shows in japan with cream the band put it together became real good friends quickly um right after that we toured all of europe uh after that all a, a u.s tour all you know people loved it uh by the end of all that touring Cream's manager Ian started to manage me because he saw me at all these shows uh hustling I was dropping my own music I'm getting major label placements mm -hmm. uh selling CDs after the shows in a duffel bag carrying these CDs around Europe mm -hmm. selling mm -hmm. them for 10 bucks each after the shows as you should and uh you know just grinding so they, they signed me because of that it's and, crazy uh, it's crazy because um yeah, Premier forgot me on a couple of those. I'm gonna have to get at him. Now, the reason why I'm saying, right? Because he was talking about the band. He was like, yo, they're so dope. Yo, we could go and, and you could come, man, and you would get along with them so well and, and add a different element and shit. You know, so I heard that a million times. So one day, man, it might happen. But uh, I know what he I know what he was trying to say. You know what I mean? Because I like for Jasmine says, I they did all that with Google. You know what I mean? So whether the rhyming and with them hype, singing different shit like for that whole movement which is dope because you got to hang out with you know donald bird rest in peace uh, uh lonnie listen smith um who else roy ayers you know you had all these guys man and, and, and reuben wilson was a hammond organ player and um who else do we have um uh, shoot oh ronnie jordan uh, he was a guitar player out of england man he was in rest in peace to him so i mean i'm just saying i was that dude too like musically me and, me and Premier used to, um, when we would do gangstar shows back in the day, he would play samples, like just loops, and I would just sing a riff. So like those who were in I know knew like, oh shit, say Prem was singing, shit, singing the shit with Prem, because we it wasn't like we had records, but in them shows, we, we would, he would just do it, and I would just do it. It was it was a, such a dope thing, but it was dope thing with Jazz with Taz too when, uh, uh, Guru would go to change his clothes. So then I would sing uh, each one of the, the group's hits, like those players. So Bernard Purdy was the drummer. So he was on James Brown or something. So I'd do a James Brown uh, thing. Uh, Donald Bird had Rock Creek Park. So I'd do that. Roy A has had In the Sunshine. So I'm saying we have this medley of me doing these vocals while they were playing. It was so dope because these was classic dudes. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm doing this shit. So anyway, man, that's, that's, that's just some other shit. Um, <laughs> as we dwell in, I'm just so great to, you know, that, that you even bring that because it's like you bringing the bass to that, to that game like that. It's almost like the girl that bring the violin or, you know, like they know Brady Ward, like, you know, gonna play the bass, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and the shit is fly. Like I said, I'm not even just gassing. It's not corny. It's dope to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this whole shit It's the most dope. important part of the hip hop. Well, it's the most important part of the hip hop beat, at least now. At least post 20, 2002, 2005, the bass is no, if there's no bass, there's, there's no beat. So, um, and with that being said, what's your favorite bass line in hip hop? Mine is Cock the Hammer by Cypress Hill. What, what do you got? You gotta know what you think. Mm. Man, there's so many. I mean, the one I always go to is New York State of Mind. Like, I just always fall into that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's um, <laughs> There are so many though. There are so goddamn many. 
Um, Shit. White Lines is a dope one, too. Yeah, all the rock him bass lines. You know what's one of my favorite is um, is Know the Ledge. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What about you, Shug? You got uh, one off the top? What's that? Shug, you got one off the top? A bass line? Yeah. Well, you know what? So, hip-hop-wise, not really because... There's so many songs over the years that I love the bass. I wish I could play the bass. So that, like, there were songs. And then, like I, I said earlier about Bootsy Collins. Yeah. So this was a dude who was, like, a highlighted playing the bass during that era. You know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, I just, if I, I love the bass, though. The bass, that 808, them two shits used to catch me all the time. Those shits was <laughs> yeah. like, all the time. The bass and 808 always had me. Boom, boom. Even when the Fat Boys, rest in peace, uh, when the dude, they must have went in some room for the acoustics or whatever. But I forget what song that is. But when he would do this shit, the shit sounded so deep. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's me. Like, that deep bass and fucking all that shit. Drums, that shit is me. So, you know, I, I don't have a favorite. <clears throat> Baby Man is still yet to be created, but I, I do. I love all bass. So, it's all good. I love all bass except for free bass. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm good on that. Um, so I got, got a question. Like, what you got say? One? No, I was just asking her if she had one before we moved on. The Roots featuring one? Erica Badu. Oh, okay. What's that? Badu? Erica you Badu. You, you got me. That's a good, that's so, a good one, too. Yeah, but I got the best yeah. one. I got the best one. So, <laughs> what were you saying? Or it's, hold on. Or, or, or. When they, if they, if you mention three artists, artists together, in that way, that's when they think you're African. Because if you say, Erica Badu, Yasimbe, Ali Kwali, I'm Afro Latina. So you just said some shit right there. there. Go. Good. Yo, yo but funny. back to you, um, <laughs> back to you, <laughs> uh, Brady. So this is on a more serious note, though, right? So. As I have been following you and stuff like that, <clears throat> and I was like, "Yeah, Brady's doing his shit. He's coming, coming alive, whatever." Um, is this something you talk about or not? But I think you had got sick for a moment, huh? Yeah, yeah. What, what year was that? It was, it was the year before last, right? Um, yeah, the Christmas before last. Yeah, I got cancer, man. I got well, I got wow. testicular cancer, just totally randomly. Wow. Uh, felt a lump down there. It was like shit. I was in Brazil. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the moment. I'm in Brazil and I remember being like, yeah, I should probably get that checked when I get back to America. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Muay Thai fighter as well. So I'm always getting bruises and stuff. So yeah, I was, for, for a while, I was like, I was like, ah, it's probably just, I, just a bruise. I got kicked in the nuts or something. You know, <laughs> I put it off for a, yeah. for a couple a couple months, but luckily not too long because most dudes put it off statistically for like a year. Damn. You know what I mean? And then it's then it's a problem. Yeah, y'all don't like mm. to go to the doctor. Yeah, mm. man. I do. I mean, if I learned anything, <laughs> you know, I being a professional musician, I, I didn't have insurance my whole life until I was like. Somehow, just now, I got insurance right before I got cancer, wow. and uh, and thank God. But yeah. yeah, I went in, and it was pretty much just like, yeah, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to take that thing out of there. It was just like that. It was so cut and dry. Wow. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh shit. <laughs> it's like, did they have to? Did you have to get do chemo? Yeah, I thought it was just gonna be the surgery, which was easy. I was back in the studio within a week. You right. know. As a man, you can lose one and you produce the same testosterone. You know, there's certain things in nature. Luckily, we got two of, and that's, right. one, of, that's one of them. So there's no difference. I was good, man. I was back. I couldn't lift weights or I couldn't really do too much. Yeah. But I was back in the lab and stuff. But then they, they got some test results. They're like, yeah, there's still some cancer in your system. So we're going to have to put you on chemo. So I did like three months of chemo. Lost all my hair. I was in there like every day, driving. Picture me waking up sick as fuck, driving in through New York traffic, parking my car in the thing, oh walking into Mount Sinai, getting hooked up to this thing all mm. day, 
going back to the car, getting back in traffic. And I was dude. living I was living with Primo, dude. Oh I know. Yeah. I was living in Prem's basement, bro, when I when I that fought cancer, man. Uh, I mean yeah, I, dude. I remember Fuck seeing the, the pictures and you were wearing a hat and then I you know, at that time it became um I was privy to that information like a while ago. And then, you know, as whether I'm in sight or not, I'm always gonna pray. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe like damn, you know. That's a fight and a half, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's too late, whatever. By the grace of God, though, you here, you still, you know, breathing. And uh, are you in remission or what's happening? Yeah, I'm totally clear. They they have to. Yeah. It's been about a year and a half. They I get tested a lot, but I'm I'm good. You know, it doesn't look uh, like they caught it really early, and good. you know, life is good. Right after that last chemo treatment. Um, I got a new crib right down the street from Preens, which you know this neighborhood <laughs> very well. You, you probably laughing. Yeah. And I, I, you know, things are just good as hell, man. Like I, I just, like the career is good. Mm. I didn't have to um, do any GoFundMe's or any of this shit when I, right. I it took six months off from the game and still landed on my feet. You know, Lucky. there was no yeah. crowdfunding, nothing against that, but like, I was proud of myself for making it through, you know, even that aspect of it, you know. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. We're glad of that too, man. Because uh, cancer is a tough thing, man. Um, that's basically how we lost school as well. Um, yeah. Different forms, different shapes, and whatever it is. But I'm glad that you guys, I'm glad that I'm I'm affiliated with you, and, and you know, don't know what the future holds. But I mean, hopefully, like we can do some things. Um, but I'm glad to have you here and you're cancer free. But right now you gotta tell me your 10 favorite MCs. Oh my God, this is just gonna be off top. I'm not prepared. Yeah, yeah, perfect. But, no um, order. Hey, hey, you know what, Brady? I would rather you do it off top than off yeah. top. Oh Dying. boy, <laughs> welcome to the danger zone. I got you, bro. I'm going, uh, I'm going Guru, Miguel, Nas, Jay-Z, um, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, Royce the five nine. Mm. Ransom. Mm. West Side Gun. I'm going. Um, what else am I going? That. J Electronica. Oh, mm. Let's say. Ah. Now. Uh, West Coast, um, Kendrick Lamar. Uh huh. That's the first. J. Cole. Nice. Okay. But that's just 10 of my favorite MCs. I'm yeah, that's, yeah, that's what we want. That that, that's beautiful because it was that's, a new one. And so that, that was dope, man. Uh, I got a question though. So, you know how like someone might have like a, a Yankee Stadium moment or, or Carnegie Hall or you know one of these you know big places would you ever uh, envision yourself having a concert where it's Brady Watt you know what I mean and you're doing it in front of this you know radio stadium and you're, you're doing the whole show it's, it's just Brady Watt do you ever like envision something like that it has to be raining water yeah all the time man I, I drive by the Met Stadium every day on the way to the studio and I was just there I took my nephew to baseball game there this weekend and um I do because right now I'm at the stage where I've I'm I'm headlining the Middle East actually. I need all you guys, everyone who's watching, to be there and everyone on this uh, Zoom to also please be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Septem September twenty first, I'm headlining the Middle East upstairs, which is like a two hundred cap room. Right, right, right. Um, I'm a, I'll definitely be through. Well, we we probably will. But you when you say what they. This is part of it, man. I, I, I need you. I need you to come uh, spit a verse or two with me, man. Either yeah. back around the way, militia, Boston. What date? What what date is that again? September twenty first. Okay, that's not a Saturday, right? I believe it's a Friday. I might be wrong. No, it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. Oh, good, good, because Saturdays my son be playing football, but that's dope. I'll be right there too. Yeah, for sure. I need you there. I need you there. Everyone's gonna be there. Uh, I was going to be in touch about this soon, so when you hit me up, I was like, perfect, because then I'll ask him to do it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'll come to 
I'll come through, man. We'll, we'll, no we'll, pressure. We'll get... <laughs> Y'all gonna, go to <laughs> gonna come down, D? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sounds cool. D D T. See, together, together, you guys are wrestling move. D T. <laughs> <Nah. laughs> Yo. <laughs> Remember the DT? You know about that? The DDT, yeah, yeah. The here double comes, D. Here comes yeah. the corn. Double DT. Here comes the corn on the cob. Double oh, DT. DT. That's it. Oh, hey. <laughs> Let me start that new TikTok account right now. Yeah, double good, DT. Good. Remember, so you listen, created um, this monster. <laughs> listen, so, oh, you know, we, we ain't really holding you like that, man. Um, we just wanted to get, get a lot caught up. I'm, I'm, and now you got your number two, Brady, so we... You can know that and you can hit me and then and be like, yo, that shit is tomorrow or whatever, a couple of days. You know what I mean? That's okay, what I mean. yeah. Because I definitely come. AK reminds um, him. Go ahead, uh, uh, Tanya, so some things you want to say. Well, I wanted to say thank you for being on the show. And also let us know your socials so people can stay into what you're I, doing. Why are you hating? Always make sure you always hate it. No, I, I said you sound like a rabbit. Go ahead. <laughs> What do rabbits sound like? I, I don't even know. You just say like, exactly. Right? We fight it. We fight it. Anyways, yeah. what are your socials? On Instagram, it's Instagram.com slash Brady Watt Base. That's at Brady Watt Base. Facebook is Brady Watt Official. Uh, TikTok, Brady Watt Base. YouTube, Brady Watt. And uh, yeah, I have, I have music on Spotify. I, I I've been releasing singles every two weeks. I'm I'm on a I'm on a whole rollout right now. That's um, cool. I just dropped a single called "Without You" featuring Talib Kweli and Conway the Machine. Mm. Uh, exactly one month ago, and then two, uh, one or no, that was three weeks ago. Then one week ago, I dropped "Soldiers Pain" featuring Ransom and R.J. Pain. Uh, these are all records I produce, I sing on, because you know, I mean, I, I I write as well. And yeah, we're 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 gonna just keep on dropping singles for a long time. So tap in on that as well as bass and bars, man. It's, I, I'm living the dream, bro. I get to just perform, make records, and bass and bars. That's all I gotta do with my life right now. So things are simple, and that's what you'll get out of me. Oh, yeah. That's one, great. And one quick, go ahead. I was going to well, say congratulations on the show. Yeah, that show's big. That Thank show's dope. Um, also, it is. It's dope. Also, like, um, as, um, as for me, like, have you ever went to have a salad with me and he ordered the cheeseburger dressing? Like, your meal. Nah, I'm fucking with you. Yo, <laughs> hey, you you'll know this about Premier, dude. It, it's uh, gotta be a, you'll know this about Premier. It's gotta be a hot meal. Yeah, shit. Yo, let me tell you, it's gotta be hot. Yo, back in the day, Premier and um and Harry Fobbs, rest in peace. These dudes used to get appetizers at breakfast. I'd be like, yo, man, hold up, what? Right, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm ready. But these dudes were getting appetizers, like salads. Uh, uh his one of his things was chocolate waffles. I'd be like, yo, man, let's wait for the breakfast to come, right? But you know, he be in the gym though. Nobody don't be in the gym more than Pete. You know what I mean? So, so it is what it is, right? That's what I, do. I like to say. Love I work out Pete. so I can eat. I actually got to talk to him a little bit. So, yo, shout out to Pete. But listen, man, we appreciate you coming through, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, the just uh, just we appreciate it wholeheartedly, man. You know, absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. And we'll get up, man. You know, we got to get up soon because I still want it. I still want this uh, Junior Walker bass line. But uh, anyway, I think I told you that like a long time. You actually played it. Bro, this is this is my idea for, for bass and bars. If, if we do bass and bars, we should do me, you, and Bumpy Knuckles and do Militia. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. You know, for sure. I thought about that, too. Speaking you know, of that. We, gotta, oh, God. we gotta be in the same place at the same time. Yes, I'm saying, yeah. That, that'll go hard. I feel like that's the home run. If I did an upright bass and then you two right mm -hmm. in front of me like that, that should go crazy. Maybe even get Cream to cut the hook. Oh, yeah. You, you, know, you, know, he I mean? you know he will, man, too. So. Yeah, because, you know, the real the real heads will appreciate that shit, bro. I mean, that's that's one of the hardest songs ever, bro. Especially in the Boston. Boston, that was our fucking theme song. I mean... 
the crazy thing about it is even when you go overseas or whatever, there's people knowing that song inside out and they and they're like twenty something. You know what I mean? That shit was done before they were born. So that's always amazing too. Like it, to literally see them like do those lyrics, man. So it, it's beautiful. But yeah, we'll put it together. You know, you know we will. You got Thank any you um, anybody on that show that's eluded you that your, your your dream collab for that show that you just haven't nailed locked it down yet? Oh, so many. Uh, the, I'll do bass and bars, God willing, till I'm a hundred years old because it's a sustainable show. I can, there's always going to be classic records. There's always going to be artists I haven't linked up with of any and all the genres. Yeah, and you so could do I you could do artists a few bars. times. Yeah. Yeah, anyone, man. Like the the main thing for bass and bars is it's not about like rapping, rapping, rapping. It's more about uh, classic record stripped down to the bass line. Yeah, that's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna hit all the genres, man. You, you'll see me with with all the artists. You know, there's so many. I, I obviously want to get with uh, with Nas, which we've talked about it a few times. I haven't made it happen. Uh, Jay Z. If, if you get you know, uh, do, if you get Cypress yeah, Hill, you gotta do Cock the Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll keep that in mind, man. I gotta check that line out. Yeah. Well, I already did Cypress Hill, though. I, I did. Uh, Staying in the I rain. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I went into five different. I went into five different bass lines within within that. Okay. Performance. There's not everyone picked up on, but I yeah, I, yeah. I did five songs That's in that again. one. Yeah, I'll watch that one again. Check that one. <laughs> well, listen, brother, uh, and also, man. Uh, you know, thank you for coming. I know your your heart's heavy right now as well, personally. So thank you for even, man, taking the time to do this, man. You know what I'm saying? So Of course. Uh, we appreciate you, man, and uh, we'll get up soon. All all right? I'll see you soon. I'll see all you guys in real life soon. We're going to party. September 21st. September 21st at the yes. Middle East. Well, and please tell everyone because I need to sell them tickets. All right, hell yeah. Night, Will. You all will. right now. Thank all you, right, guys. Man. All right, peace, peace. bro. Yeah. Thank you. That was good. That was good. So, um, uh, have you been watching Winning Time, Big Show on HBO? Season two is here, halfway through. Oh boy. I just, I just seen that, so I know I got to check it. So I, good, I man. Wanna, uh, I want to get because you know I was getting into the first one. Yeah. You know I didn't complete it, but it was actually very interesting because when you know that when you live that time, you know you're like, man, this is any story. I'm like that anyway. Any stories are like from the time that I've lived them. Like even like you know. The new edition movie and all that different stuff, like NWA, all that. I love that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, so I know I got to catch, and uh, also I got to catch my uh, Michael Bivens. Uh, yeah. He has a documentary out. Yeah. You know, I heard it's supposed to be pretty good. So. So the I guy, check that out. the guy who plays Larry Bird, is really good this year, right? He's really he, not that he was well, bad last last season, but he's kind of stealing the show this season. You don't think so? Uh, I think he's doing a very, very good job. Like, they got Magic Johnson pinned down. They're not letting him be Magic Johnson. And Larry Bird's just flourishing in the NBA. And it, Matt, not to ruin anything of the season, but this is what's... How did you feel about Magic Johnson being a diehard Celtics fan? Like you well, were here. So, so I'll, give you a quick, I'll give you a quick story. Um, so I'm from Boston, man, of course. And it was always this thing in people's minds that... Boston always had to have a, a, a white superstar on the Celtics, right? Even though we were fans, this is really how, like, this was the thing that was through people's minds and through, throughout the black community, so to speak. So, and the, and the white dudes were good. That's the thing. Like, it ain't like it was bad. Bob Cousy for his time, he was the man. Dave Cowens, uh, uh, Havlicek, Heinsohn. You go through them, they were good. It's not like these dudes were like, Oh, they're making them good now. Nah. So that was a fact. So there was a little bit of love because they sucked for a little while and uh, they weren't hitting on it. And then, so you started hearing about Larry Bird. So this is pre-social media and all of that. So the way you heard a lot of things was on uh, news, sports uh, uh, sports show and Sports Illustrated, the magazine. And, um, so the first thing I hear, I saw, here they go, Miss White dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, who is Larry Bird? And then think about it. He didn't go to no powerhouse joint. He went to yeah. Indiana State. Yeah. You know, he was recruited by Indiana because he was nice, but he didn't want to go there. And uh, actually, he took, I believe he took a year off. He was yeah. working with his father, Fast Truck. 
and then he went back, and then he, you know. Well, they drafted him. Right? The, the Celtics drafted right. him, and then he was like, "Well, I'm going to finish college. You can waste your you can waste your pick if you want, but I'm going to go to finish yep. college." You know what I'm saying? So, and the thing with me was, I'm still just hearing this until I seen. Uh, I heard something where he dropped fifty. He dropped forty something. This is in college. Yeah. Like, oh man, damn. Bro. Let me see, and that's how shit was then. Let me see this. You know what I'm saying? So then, um, um, I saw it. And I was like, yo, this fucking dude is nasty. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm literally dudes. He was the whole team. There was one other dude on that team that was kind of high, but Larry Bird was the team. Yeah. They was going all these points, getting doubled and triple team, all kinds of shit. It was amazing. So then when the championship came down to it against uh, Michigan State, who had magic, right? Um, I I wanted Larry Bird to win. You know what I mean? Because I was like, yo, this dude is out of nowhere. He's kind of almost like an underdog and he's nasty. But it was like, you know, they, they overwhelmed him, even though he had, he still had like 90. He still had like, I think I want to say a triple-double, you know, but still that's all, you know, he, Larry Bird. But then he mm -hmm. went on, he got, when he got to the league, I know Magic was there too, right? And so the way I used to look at it, it became that rivalry, but I was like, yo, it's dope that both these dudes are nice yeah. for different re reasons. And of course I stood behind uh, Larry Bird. I was like, to this day, I'm still like, yo, Larry Bird's the shit, like, come on. I mean, you had to watch shit that this dude was doing, like, you know what I mean? I had people hating and shit, but I'd be like, ah, Larry, you know, and, and Magic was great. So I never felt no ill will. I just liked the, I liked the competition that they had, like, you know, so that's what felt you Celtics were, and the Lakers going at it, you know? You were around know, knowing what was going on back then. So that means, what was that, 1981 they got drafted or something like that? Um, so, probably. So that means the 1980 Celtics and the 1980 Lakers, they were garbage teams to get the first yeah, and second pick in the draft? I, I Yeah, because I remember when the Celtics had the biggest jump in history mm. from Burns' rookie season from the year before. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, but he was that nice. Think about it. He went to a pro team, and he said in one of his um, interviews that he wasn't sure how he was going to do in the league, but he, he, he thought he could do it. And then he said he played one preseason game, whatever, and he was like, oh, this is going to be cake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, and it was. He showed up when they recruited him for Indiana. Yeah. Um, he showed up. To the he didn't want to play and they kept harassing him to play, and finally his his dad said something to him that made him like change his whole fucking outlook on life and um, he showed up and played <laughs> he played the starting uh, the team and he got he jumped in a game with the starting the starting five or whatever and smoked them and he was wearing a jacket and jeans <laughs> and cowboy boots what? wasn't he and cowboy boots yeah. one, one thing with like Barry Bird is everybody knows it's iconic when he kept on his uh. His sweat jacket when he won the three point shooting contest. Yeah, yeah. Right? He told everybody, I'm going to win it. I got this. You know what I mean? I think he won the three times that he was in it. Like, you know what I mean? He, he just knew, had the weirdest looking shot, too. Like, but it was pure. It was yeah. fresh. And like, I definitely I was think black. he was, he was one of, he was, he's a great, you know, he's definitely a great, but he just, to me, watching him play, he looked very awkward how he ran. He looked like he he looked like he never think, like ran before. <laughs> think, tall, probably. That's what I thought. Think about this: he played against some like there's a classic game where he played against Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. Dominique Wilkins nicknamed the Hyman, the Human Highlight Film. Yeah, Human Highlight. He was like that. He physically, so you would figure that he was going to you know defend Bird, whatever. Yeah. Yo, he put a he put a clinic on uh, with him. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it, when we look back at those, I, I think when we look back at Dominique Wilkins, I think it was pretty much all high-flying acrobatical shit more than he was actually very good. Well, actually, actually, so in the beginning, that's how it is for a lot of them. Yeah. But he added a little mid-range shot, and he could play defense. You could you block shots. You know, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. Did. But once that shit starts wearing out, that athleticism, see, Larry Bird... Didn't play with that athleticism like that, but he did too. Like this, they, they got like, yo, this highlight taste of this dude dunking on people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because he he still was six nine, and he still could play the game of basketball. He, he made it look like you could. He made it look like you could do it. Oh, I could if he could do yeah. it. I could if he could do it. I could do it. Look at that guy. You know what I'm saying? But he was just that's like, the, <laughs> that's the thing about rap. I hate that that makes people do that too. Yeah, yeah. Like definitely. they feel like you know them, and they and you rap, they can too. 
I've heard some of the most hard, worst, horrible rappers in my life yeah. from somebody who just started rapping because they know me. Like when, we, when I first got out, now I'd be like, "Yo, come on, dog." You know what I'm saying? After because now all I say is, "Listen, my grandson raps, my daughter raps, yeah, my grandpa raps." Like this is shit I still hear to this day. I do all raps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, my cat raps on TikTok. But I'm saying, you know what I mean? Somebody asked me the other day, it says, hey, are you famous? And I said, why? Because I'm big and I'm black and I have on chains? No, I says, uh, I says, yo. <laughs> yes. No, nah, I really said, yo. What I team says, do you play for? I'm pretty famous. I'm famous. I'm not rich. I'm famous. You know, I'm known, you know. And then she, she says, the older, older uh, woman. And um, I guess it was them two and uh, their husbands. And she said, well, my friend says that, you you know, you're in movies or whatever. And I said, well, you know, she, she's probably pretty right. You know? Then So then they got all, you know, hey, 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 good, good. But, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know everything. <laughs> it was just funny, though, because like, actually I was in a Dunkin' Donuts. And I was like, you know, I go to Dunkin' Donuts, but I don't drink coffee, right? So it's, it's, the bad it's okay. That's what, they, that's what they love about you. You're, you're their favorite yeah. customer. And they always go. They always go, hey, so you having coffee? I'm like, yeah, I don't drink coffee. I'm in there for the for the donuts or the little wake up wraps or and a, sandwich. Which or wake up wrap do you like? He's in there for the bathroom. The, Just egg the, and cheese. The egg and and cheese. those little those little potatoes are dope too, though. Oh, I never had those like. What's the place that has like the bacon thing? What's that? That's, That's Dunkin' Donuts. donuts. Never, they got the black had. pepper bacon. I never had it, but I saw it on commercial. But like, I think like it has like maple on it. Yo, do you eat hot dogs and beans? Nah, neither. Yes you know, and man, yes. Yes and yes. Neither you know? no and no. Bailey? Pork and beans. Yo, the reason why I say that, like, I asked DL, he's the only one I ask shit like that because it's mad shit he don't eat. Yeah. So I be like, I be like, you eat hot dogs and beans? Like, nah. I asked him something the other day. I was like, you eat that? He was like, no. I was, I'm like, you eat the burgers? The answer though, right? is probably no. Yeah, probably no. You eat yeah. burgers though, right? Oh yeah, I had one today. Yes, yeah, <laughs> he's a bur burger meister. Oh yeah. So I guess we're at that time. Oh, it's that time of the week. Stupid oh, as first hell. And <laughs> I just want to say, we're we're on to the football season. Oh really? Um, I'm I'm looking forward to man, you know, seeing like the Jets have Aaron Rodgers. This supposed to be good. Think, uh, what Josh is this? Harrell. This is the last week of preseason games. Yeah, it's over now. Um, the new games will be next week. Um, um, uh, the Patriots have Mac Jones as their quarterback. They cut his backups, but I heard they're back in camp Wait, today. Wait, does that mean we got to pick? That's not, no, next next week we'll pick. It. Okay, I'm lost. That's next week? I'm found. Yeah, next week. So okay. I'm looking forward to the football season and uh, see if real love is coming back. Yeah, real love will be back. And, and uh, we play uh, Philly, Patriots play Philly first game. Should be wild, but it should be. I, I was waiting for football. You know? uh, baseball, we already know that our teams, New York Yankees and Red Sox, yeah, so are both Yankees, triple mule. Yankees are trash this year. It's terrible. It's the second time in 30 years. But so I'm seeing the, the, the all way, I'm seeing all my friends on Facebook who are Red Sox fans posting memes about how terrible the Yankees are. So I wasn't really paying attention to the standings. So I went in to see. Uh -oh. oh, how many? How yeah. many games in front of the Yankees or the Red Sox? Okay. They must be 30. You and it was like fire. three. And I'm just like, bro, you can't be posting these memes, bro. Yo, yo, you know the crazy <laughs> part? So the, the talk is now that they feel like uh, Alex Cora, the manager of the Red Sox, might get fired. And then the Yankees or the Mets are going to hire him. And that's probably what happened. Not you know the what Yankees. I'm saying? The Yankees will hire him. The, the Yankees will hire him because he was involved with the cheating scandal that – Kept them out of the World Series a few years back, so they'll they'll, yeah, ne look, they'll never hire look, him. Look, the Red Sox hired him, but he's still top. He's still top management. Who think about somebody who's in some shit like that, and then they hire like you get hired after go for a year, chill out with your family, mm. all these means you got all this money. How do you feel about that? I, that yeah, it's uh, great. That that warmed me up inside and not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, no. So yeah, sports. So, so as we stand here, I'm going to take that and throw it right back to you in the air. <laughs> and this is, uh, I think, that time of the week, right, dear? Stupid as hell. Oh, it's his favorite time. Who is stupid as hell? So, 
in a PNC bank in Hollywood, California, an elderly man allegedly handed a teller a note that said, give me the money. The bank teller, <laughs> teller pretended not to see the note and handed a bank withdrawal slip to the robber who stated, I'm not here for that. I'm pissed. Now he's a senior citizen. I'm here to rob you. <laughs> the teller pretended she was having the computer issues and asked the man to take a seat while he was robbing. She said, take a seat. <laughs> Pointed to a dick. He did. As the man was sitting waiting, police were alerted and rushed to the scene and arrested James Kelly, age 77. This is one guy who's definitely going to get time off for good behavior. You know, so it's kind of crazy. Because he went in and robbed the bank with his 77-year-old ass. And she told him to sit down, so he did. And then, <laughs> and then he, the police come, and that's a wrap. So I hate to say it, he's 77 years old, but um, Jimmy Kelly or James Kelly, you are definitely this week stupid as hell. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You did not pick that one out. You did not pick it is that out at is. all. I'm, stick I'm robbing you. Go sit down. Okay. Okay. You know, <laughs> get the. She get must the be money filling the bags. He's either dumb, or be, uh, stupid as hell, uh, thinking uh, maybe she's going to get my cash, or he's just like completely defeated, and that was his last attempt at <laughs> he's making like, I'm some just money. Gonna try this, but if it doesn't work yeah, out, yeah. And then he 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 realized that he wasn't menacing, and he just sat his ass if down and <laughs> went to jail. Kind of feel sad for him. You're gonna, yeah, yeah. If you're the bank is 77 years old, so. I, I don't even have the explanation for it. I don't get it. You know what I mean? So you go to jail. Maybe maybe you were in jail years ago and you missed your cellmate. I don't know. But I'm just saying it's kind of wild that at 77, you're going to rob. And this is a real story. This isn't uh, made up. This is some stupid shit that really happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this month. You know, so James Kelly, I hope you got yourself together. And please don't rob no more goddamn banks. Mm -hmm. right, man. Where are his kids? Somebody come get him. <laughs> no, what well, we hear, they probably one of them might have worked in the bank. It might have been the inside yeah, job. Maybe he was. Maybe he was well, robbing the bank to pay his child support. Who knows? We don't know. Oh, seventy-seven oh, years. If he's fifty years in, in the rear. <laughs> Word. Hey, listen. Number eighty-two is in the books. 82. Eight-two. Um. We appreciate, man, y'all coming through. We appreciate. Uh, Brady, Brady Watch coming through. You know. Um, because we, I also like his best friend that passed, I believe, from cancer as well. Oh, jeez. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. It happened a couple. So, uh, you know, condolences to his family as well. And um, another great episode is in the books. As I always say, uh, excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. Don't, don't make them. And as we grow, we glow. You know, and that's our intention, man. Try to bring you all in and try to connect this thing together. And um, shout out, you know, Hip Hop 50. You know, I've been posting uh, rappers, but yeah. I want to shout out UTFO. Um, you know, rest in peace, educated rapper. Rest in peace, Kango Kid. Yep. But at, at that point, the Roxanne joined all that when they was out doing them songs at that time. They, they was popping, man. You know, it's a, it's a legendary group with some legendary songs. So this week, man, Hip Hop, man, salute Hip Hop 50, UTFO. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. On my dark days. On my dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure them. Hard out hands.